Amen. If you would, stand to your feet. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Stand up on your feet. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. God, we bless you today. Hallelujah. How many of y'all glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. How many of you out there in Facebook land glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Hallelujah. He woke us up this morning. He started us on our way. Amen. And listen, let's just like the Sunday school lesson said, there's no place I'd rather be. Amen than in the presence of the Lord. So I count it a privilege and a blessing just to be here. I pray you feel the same way. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for this another day. God, we praise your name. Lord, we want to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, you, you've just been so good to us. Hallelujah. You've held back the enemy from taking us out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You've kept us through a global pandemic. Hallelujah. You, you kept us from our haters. Hallelujah, God. You kept us from those who would scandalize our name, God, and try to tear us down, God. We thank you today. So that's why we're here. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. God, we bless you today and we welcome your presence into this building with us and across the virtual airways, we welcome your presence. You said where two or three would be gathered in your name, that you would be there in the midst. So we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you for being here with us. We celebrate your presence, God. We don't take your presence for granted. Bless us today as we honor you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Say it one more time. Amen. Amen. And one more time, amen. Praise the Lord of love. 
Lord. Let's give another hand for our young people this morning. Amen. They look so good. Even the, the little fellas up there, they were standing. I don't know if they were saying much, but they were, but they were there. And so we want to train up our children in the way they should go. Amen. So that when they get older, they'll continue that. So thank you to all of those that are working with our young people. Good morning and welcome to King Solomon. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord again. And we want to welcome those of you joining us Facebook Live. We are letting us know, we want to let you know that we are here each Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school. Then we also have Sunday school via Zoom. So you can Zoom in, tune in at your house if you want to join our Sunday school or you can come here into the building. And then we'll continue our worship service here in the building each Sunday morning at 10 a.m. as well as Facebook Live. So welcome. We are so delighted to have you worshiping with us. And please come back and do that again. Our announcements, um, I do want to highlight from last week that the job fair that I spoke about is uh, this Tuesday at the State House Convention Center. So if you're looking for a new job opportunity, you might want to polish up that resume and check them out. And then also, we have a new database. We have a new system, and so we are needing your help. Next Sunday, starting next Sunday, we are going to be giving our membership information update sheets. And we're going to need your information, all of our members. We're hoping everyone will fill this sheet out so that we can have contact information and be able to reach you should we need to reach out to you. So please fill out one of these sheets with your name, your address, your email, and your phone number so that we can update our membership and we will be able to reach each and every one of us. Let us continue to remember all of our sick and shut-in members, those who are in hospitals and nursing homes. Let us remember them and keep them lifted in prayer. Thank you for being here today. God bless you. And if God says the same, I'll see you next week. There it is. Uh, the Sunday school was talking about, uh, I'd love to come to the, in the presence of the Lord. You know, they went to the tabernacle, and the tabernacle is where the presence of the Lord was. And this is King Solomon. It's, uh, we can call it a tabernacle if you want to, but uh, this is where the presence of the Lord is supposed to be. Uh, one can put a 1,000 to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. And all of us in here is putting millions to flight, putting millions of demons to flight. Amen? Because we're on one accord in the Lord Jesus. And this is what, it all, what it's all about. We just want to worship. We want to get some time in to worship the Lord. And I, I don't know about everybody, but I know that I'm blessed. I've lived... Uh, quite a long time, uh, I'm 76 years old, and the Lord has blessed me to be still, still standing. And, it, and it's, it, you know, living in this world today, when if you make it that far, you're doing pretty good. And if the Lord is with you, you can keep on going. Amen. So I just thank the Lord today, and I just want to praise his name and let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord. We come before your holy presence with thanksgiving in our hearts. Lord, we thank you that you've blessed us from our early existence even to this present moment. We thank you, Lord, for being in the house of the Lord and having a mind to want to be there. Lord, it's a blessing to just have a mind to want to be in God's presence because a lot of people uh, don't care to be in your presence, but we, we love your presence, Lord, and we thank you. And we thank you for the little children that were singing. You said, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. 
And so we thank you for them who is doing the right thing and all the people that work with them. You know, it's a blessing to have people to work with the, with, with the children. And thank you, Lord, for all of what you do, all the people that do your work, do your bidding here at King Solomon. Thank you for our pastor, dear God, a man who is not afraid to believe the whole word of God. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you that we have a leader that will lead us in the proper manner. And we bless your name, Lord. We bless you, for you are worthy, Lord. You're worthy of all the blessings. And as they said in the Sunday school lesson, they went from strength to strength. And in the New Testament, it said from faith to faith and from glory to glory. So we thank you, Lord, that we, we believe that, Lord. And we believe that you are going to take us higher in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless our families. Bless our children, dear God. Lord, they are an offspring from us. And they are supposed to be blessed because we are blessed. The children should, should the, 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 the parents should lay up for the children or lay something, uh, uh, have something left for them, dear God. And we just pray that you would help us to have that kind of mindset and have us to think on the things of God, the things that are meaningful, things that are lovely, things that are, are wonderful, things that mean something to you, Lord. But help us not to be thinking on things that is, is uh, uh, not productive, dear God. We want to have a productive uh, thought process and not have things in our mind to cause us to do the wrong thing. And Lord, we pray that you would bless uh, King Solomon. Lord, we thank you for all the members here, all the people that uh, work with the pastor and to uh, uh, cause the church to function. And Lord, we thank you for the, the, the uh, uh, mission of the church to save souls, dear God to save souls in this community and wherever you may win them through King Solomon ministry. Dear Father, we thank you for the staff and all the people that gather here and to do your work, Lord. We thank you for all of them in Jesus' name because we know you put them here, Lord. You did this. And we thank you, Father, for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. And we ask that you would bless our nation, dear God, because sometimes we take our eye off of Jesus and we look at what's going on around us and help us, Lord, to keep our eye on Jesus and to pray for our nation, pray for the ones that are in charge of, of this country, dear God, because we know that they can't do it without you, Lord. They need some godly intervention. Dear God, as someone said, all of these problems of the nation, it says, it said, well, it looked like a job for El Shaddai. It looked like a job for El Shaddai. We know that man cannot uh, complete this great task without your help, Lord. And we ask that you would bless in Jesus' name. And Lord, and as I wouldn't prayed, I just, Lord, forgive us for every sin that we may have thought, dear, dear God. We may have sin in our thinking, uh, the intrusive thoughts that Satan put in our head, intrusive thoughts that are not productive. We ask that you'd forgive us, dear God. In Jesus' name, amen.
I feel all my hope, all my joy is gone. Late in the midnight hour, I talk to my God and it gives me joy, joy, joy in my, in my soul. standing all over the building. Let's give our young people a big round of applause. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody said, did not our hearts burn within? Amen. Thank you to our directors, our musicians, and of course the parents for bringing them out. Amen. To serve the Lord in the middle of a pandemic. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this another day. God, we thank you because we're here and we didn't have to be here. But you saved us. You sanctified us and you gave us another chance. So we say thank you for another day. 
thank you because you're graceful to us. You give us grace. And we don't deserve it. We didn't earn it. But you give us grace anyhow. So we thank you. We pray, God, for those that are going through wherever they are, whatever they may be facing. We believe that you've healed us, that you've blessed us, you've prospered us. We believe that you've made a way out of no way for us. So, God, we say thank you for being our provider. God, I thank you because you are our peace. You are our joy. So, Lord, we thank you for being everything that we need. And now, Lord, as we prepare to move towards the end of another year, God, we pray that we would sanctify the Lord God in our hearts and that we would be mindful of why you put us here and that, God, we will live our lives on purpose and intention in serving you. Thank you, Lord. Give us all an ear to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. And after we've heard, we pray for boldness to go out and walk by faith and not by sight. There is no weapon that is formed against us that's going to work. Hallelujah. Because we're covered. You are our refuge and our fortress, our shield, our buckler, our very present help in the time of trouble. So thank you, Lord, for your protection. Thank you for your guidance. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bible, open it up to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9. And go down to verse number 11. And I, yeah, it's, I need more. It's not happening. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse number 11. Hebrews 9, verse number 11. When you got it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it, we praying for you. <laughs> Hebrews 9, verse 11. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. This morning, I want to talk to you about, have you talked to the Lord about it? Amen. You may be seated. Have you talked to the Lord about it? We're approaching the end of the year, getting ready to go into 2022. And... I know the Lord has been ministering to me for my own self and then certainly some to you all. You know, the end of the year is a point of contact. You can use it as a point of contact for change. And so he's been ministering to me about going higher in him. Amen. Expanding uh, my tent state, so to speak. Uh, reinforcing my stance in ministry and in making sure that I'm aligning my life with why God put me here. Uh, and I think you need to do the same thing. You know, life is too short to waste time. I mean, it's just, I'm, I'm, the older I get, I'm realizing it's too short to waste time. And so, I think all of us should evaluate and assess our lives to make sure that we're not wasting time. Amen. The Bible says, redeem the time because the days are evil. So, with that being said, the world is facing some critical times. Amen. You're going to have to, you're going to have to get that in your thinking. Amen. That the world is facing critical times, that uh, the world is heading for a climactic conclusion. And as we move forward towards that conclusion, the back of mankind is being pushed up against the wall. And 
as we move, I've said it before, quit looking for this world to get better. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Luke chapter 21, verse 26. I've asked them to have that ready to put it up there for you. Luke 21 and 26. Uh, put that up there so they can see it. Luke 21 for you out there. Luke 21 and 26. Uh, in the book of Luke chapter 21 and Matthew 24, Jesus uh, gives his own dissertation on the end times. And look what it says in verse 26. It says, and when that time comes, as we move close to the end, it says, men's hearts will fail them for fear and for expectation are looking after those things which are coming on the earth. That's telling us that the closer we get to the end, mankind, they know something is wrong and they can see it coming and the only thing they can do is fear and worry about it. That's the world we live in. So our backs as humans is being pushed up against the wall and we're tumbling down a path that we can't stop and that we don't have control over. Amen. Uh, you know, I was going to go to the fair. And then I saw them out there fighting. I said, I'm probably not going to go out there. It's a shame you can't even go to the fair no more. Somebody ought to say amen. Now let me tell you something. If you're in here out there, if you're out there fighting at the fair, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Huh? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. People don't bring their kids to a state fair to see you box. I hope you're listening. I'll catch you later. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to be ashamed of yourself if you are out here shooting and killing and selling drugs and doing everything under the sun except for what you're supposed to be doing. Because as it relates to what I'm sharing, now I'm you part of the problem, not the solution. So mankind is in a bad place. And it's not going to get better. Amen. Don't expect the world to get better. Solomon made that very clear. He says, uh, the wicked are going to continue to go deeper and deeper in darkness. But he also said, the righteous are going to continue to move towards an eternal light. So it should get better for us. And so the world and the people in it are in need of deliverance. Somebody say deliverance. deliverance. Amen. Deliverance means uh, I was in chains, but now I'm not in chains no more. Deliverance means I was shackled, but now I'm not shackled anymore. How many of y'all know that in our homes, in our families, in our communities, we got a lot of people that need deliverance? I mean, you got people everywhere who are in shackles, who are in chains. You got people on the outside of the church, and you got people on the inside of the church that need to be delivered. Come on. You got unhappy people in the world. You got unhappy people in the body of Christ. You got people addicted in the world. You got people that's in the body of Christ that's addicted. You got people that are miserable out there and miserable in here. People that are unhappy out there, or unhappy in here. A lot of times the same stuff the world going through, the church is going through the same thing. Amen. So there's a big need for deliverance. Somebody say deliverance. There's a big need for deliverance everywhere. Amen. And I don't know what you've been facing. I don't know what you've been dealing with. But I'm telling you, if you're dealing with something that's not making your life pleasurable, you need some deliverance. Hallelujah. If you got something going on and, and, and it's causing you pain and you feel like you've been locked down, your life has been put on lockdown, and maybe it's a sickness, maybe it's a money issue, maybe it's a financial issue, maybe it's a, a family issue, whatever it is that's got you on lockdown, have you not happy, not enjoying your life, you need to be delivered from that thing. Hallelujah. You need to be delivered from that. And deliverance is what God wants for everybody. Matter of fact, the very word salvation, it means deliverance. But how many of y'all realize that deliverance always begins with a conversation? Huh? I'm trying to get your 2022 ready to right, start on the right path. Deliverance begins with a conversation. Your better day, your better tomorrow begins with a conversation. You coming out of the issue you in, it begins with a conversation. Now let me say this before I go here. 
is that the problem in the past has been for most of us, we conversated with the wrong person. I mean, you, you talking to somebody about your money and they ain't got no money neither. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, they broke, you broke, and you asked them, well, how you make money? Well, they can't tell you they ain't got no money. Amen, somebody. Matter of fact, you trying to get delivered, and you go to somebody that's got the same shackles you got on on. So if you want to be delivered, you got to change the, conversa- the people you're having the conversation with. And before we talk about people, I believe you ought to first begin the co- your conversation with the Lord. Come on. Because real deliverance begins with a conversation between you and the Lord. And I'm telling you out there, the only reason you're still in shackles today is because you have not been conversating with the Lord. Hallelujah. You better ask Paul and Silas. They ended up in prison one night. And they began ministering to the Lord and the Lord began ministering to them. And watch this. They 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 come out of shackles and didn't even have no keys. And I don't know about you, it's some stuff in my life. I want to get delivered from it, and I'm not going to waste my time looking for the keys. Come on. And we used to sing that song, Just a Little Talk with Jesus Makes It All Right. I'm telling you, there's some truth in that song. Just a little talk with Jesus can make it all right. So deliverance begins with a conversation, and that conversation must begin with Almighty God. Hmm? How many of y'all want a better 2022 than you had this year? I don't know about you, but I'm tired of the pandemic. I'm tired of COVID. I'm tired of these masks. Come on. I'm going to get a booster shot, but I'm tired of getting stuck too. Come on. And I hope the booster don't do me like that second shot did me. That second shot kept me at home. Amen. (laughs) But it's certain things in this life that I'm tired of. And I'm not not talking about y'all, I'm talking about me, hallelujah. Quit trying to deliver everybody else. First, get your own self delivered. Huh? That's another point of deliverance. Don't try to deliver nobody else until you've been delivered. Don't try to set nobody free until you've been set free. Watch this, because the blind cannot lead the blind. Come on, so you need your eyes opened up first, and then when your eyes are opened up, then you'll see clearly to help somebody else. So conversation for deliverance begins with a conversation between you and the Lord. And here's why. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 7. Proverbs 1, 7. What we need in 2022 and right now more than ever in our lives is this right here. Proverbs 1, 7. Wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Principal. Who runs the school? Children. Even the kids know. The principal runs the school. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. Now, the question is, what is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to use information. Wisdom is is the ability to know what to do when you don't know what to do. Wisdom is the ability to know that you shouldn't go to the fair on Friday night and wisdom tell you, no, go on Saturday and not on Friday because wisdom knows that on Friday they're going to have a shootout. Wisdom is the ability, wisdom, you make money, wisdom is the ability to let you know that you make $15 an hour and you can't afford a $100,000 car. That's called wisdom. Come on, somebody. Wisdom is the ability, you make $30,000 a year, wisdom will tell you you cannot afford a $500,000 house just because your sister got one. And it's a nice house, and God can bless you just like you can bless them, but wisdom tells me it's not my time yet. Wisdom will tell, come on, wisdom will tell you how to go left, how to go right, when to sit down, when to get up. Come on, wisdom will tell you when to answer the door and not open the door. Wisdom will tell you to cut your phone off. Wisdom will tell you to cut your phone on. Sometimes wisdom tells me, boy, you need to get off Facebook a little bit. Amen, likes, come on. Don't y'all lie to me because y'all out there too, come on. Y'all on Facebook and TikTok, now the church got a TikTok page, come on. I'm like, good Lord, TikTok too? 
But you know what? I got to be obedient. The Lord said we need to get out there, so we're getting out there. Come on. Holly, we're going to chase them devils down wherever they I don't care where they're at. Because the wisdom of God said, preach if you, you can't sit around waiting for them to come up in here. You got to go out there and get them. That's the wisdom of God. So we on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. What else we on up there? We on some of everything. Because wisdom in this age says you got to go get them. You can't come up in here. Come on. Some of them scared of COVID. Some of them just too lazy to get up out of bed. So wisdom is the principal thing. So if you want to get delivered, you need wisdom. Here, here's where it's at. Now, where do I get it? Here's where it's at. Proverbs chapter 2, verse number 6. Proverbs 2 and 6. Watch this here. How many of y'all need more wisdom in your life? I'm telling you, Solomon spent 30, God, God used Solomon to put 31 books of wisdom in the Bible. And I bet you ain't opened it up in five years. The book of Proverbs, 31 books of good, practical, life-changing wisdom. Proverbs chapter 2, verse number 6. Watch this. For the Lord, someone say the Lord. For the Lord gives wisdom. Leave that up there. So if you want wisdom, if you want to know what to do when you don't know what to do, he's telling you, you got to go to where the Lord is at. And I'm telling you, a lot of us are stuck right now because we have not been spending time in the place where the Lord is at. And you use this, I don't have time. Listen, make time. I don't understand the Bible. Listen, stay in the Bible until you figure it out. Come on. He says, for the Lord is the one that gives the wisdom. You know why you barely making it? Because of this. You haven't had a conversation with the Lord to get the wisdom to get out of it. Huh? When you lack wisdom, you don't even know how to pray. You're still going in, going in prayer asking God for a whole bunch of stuff. Come on. When you get wisdom, you realize God has already given me some stuff. So that means if you already given it to me, that, that changes my whole prayer dynamic. Come on. So now when I go to prayer, I don't go in asking God for nothing. I go in and have a conversation and give him praise for the stuff he's already done. You got folks running around. I can't seem to find a job. You know why you can't find a job? Because you haven't found wisdom. You find wisdom, you find the job. You find wisdom, you find the peace. You find wisdom, you find the joy. Come on. You find wisdom, you find the husband. You find wisdom, you find the wife. Hmm? You're trying to get the wife without the wisdom. You're trying to get the husband without the wisdom. You better go get wisdom first because wisdom going to tell you everything about them. He says, for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. It says, from his mouth. When the last time you spent time in front of God's mouth? This is a conversation. When is the last time you talked to God about your situation and your circumstances? Let's, let's go out one more level. When the last time you talked to the Lord about your children? When the last time you talked to the Lord about your family? When the last time you talked to the Lord about that person in your family that's suffering with dementia? When the last time you talked to the Lord about that person in your family with a cancer diagnosis? Y'all don't want to talk about this stuff, huh? You just want to sweep it under the rug and wait to see what the doctor going to say. I ain't waiting on no doctor. Huh? I thank God for the wisdom of doctors, but there's a wisdom that's higher than the doctor's wisdom. Come on. Put verse number 7 up there. For the Lord gives wisdom. Verse number 7. Watch this here. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. This is huge. Solomon said he stores up sound wisdom for the upright. First of all, let's talk about the upright. Who's the upright? Say me. That's not enough for y'all. Out there too. Say me. You are the upright. You are the righteous. Amen. You are the redeemed. You are the holy. You are the sanctified. You are all of that and a bag of chips. Come on. You might not have thought you was the bag of chips, but you a bag of chips too. Come on. Don't go to the fair and buy chips. You are the chips. And can't nobody help you until you begin to know who you are. I don't care what. I don't care what. Look, I know who I is. In the, listen, in the Lord. He stores up wisdom for them folks. Look, he stores it up for them, not from them. 
What does this mean? This means that everything I need to know to get delivered, God got it for me. It says store up, but watch this here. what that means. That means I got to slow my life down and go get it. Let me talk to folks out here. Listen, if you unhappy today, man, I just, look at here. I got, okay, let me take the gloves off. That's your fault. If you barely making it, that's your fault. I'm talking to y'all now. If you barely making it, that's your fault. If you're unhappy, that's your fault. If you're not content, that's your fault. If you, you can't find a job, that's your fault. Come on. You don't have enough money, that's your fault. Hmm? You don't, you're not content, that's your fault. Y'all don't want to hear that, do you? You can't go nowhere until you take accountability. There has to be some accountability for your actions and for your life. It's your fault. Because Solomon said, the Lord stores up the right information for those that are in him. So let's do, let's, let's, before I go, I'm almost done before I go. Listen, let's take some accountability real quick. Look at this, say it with me. The issues in my life, y'all say it out there too. We're going to do it one more time. Y'all behind, catch up. The issues in my life, they my fault. Leave your ex-husband, your ex-wife alone. Leave your baby daddy alone. Leave your baby mama alone. Come on. Leave the child support office alone. Leave, listen, leave them folks alone. Leave, the, leave your supervisor alone. Leave the Razorback coach alone. He doing the best he can. Leave UAPB coach alone. They weren't expected to win anyway. <laughs> we love them, but they weren't, didn't nobody expect them to win. Thank God they came and, and we had some unity in the state of Arkansas for one day of our life. I thank God they played. I thank God they came, they played, everybody was happy, didn't nobody get shot, didn't nobody fight. Come on, hallelujah. Anyhow. Hallelujah. And they told me UAPB got $600,000. You ought to be praising the Lord for HBCU. <laughs> Hallelujah. So take accountability for yourself. Because God has wisdom for every situation that you face in your life. And I'm telling you, I don't know about you, but I made up my mind I'm going to go higher if I got to go by myself. God getting ready to promote me right now. I've been sitting on it for about two years. He, he told me it's time. He said, don't worry about it. I didn't line everything up. And you know what? Sometimes we struggle to believe him. <laughs> I don't care how long you've been walking, but sometimes you struggle to believe him, Miss Matt. Huh? But he's been telling me this for a while, but I've been having my, hat, my foot on the brake a little bit. And so this week, I made up my mind, I'm going higher. And then all of a sudden, last night, somebody called me almost about 10 o'clock and said, look here, I got to talk to you about going higher. He sent somebody to call me last night to tell me about an opportunity for me. And then he, said, and then he added on there, and, and when it's ready, I'm going to call and let you know. Y'all don't think God know how to do it? And you know what's so good about it? I didn't have to call him, he called me. See, when you honor God, come on, and you honor the wisdom of God, blessings will find you. You ain't got to go chase nobody. Because I thank God that God know where I'm at. God know what I got going on. Come on. Hallelujah. Even when, when, I, when I can't get in here myself, like I was gone last week, my money will still make it here. Come on. That's why I like Gavilify. Huh? So the wisdom of God is there for you to go higher. Oh, it's there. Here we go. Here's the secret, and I'm done. Hebrews chapter 9. This is where I started at. Good. I got 11 minutes. Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 11. Here's the secret to the wisdom of God to get delivered. And my subject was, have you talked to the Lord about it? Watch this here. Most people struggle with the question of the subject. Because they don't feel worthy. 
I'm telling you, you just don't feel worthy. You don't feel like you deserve it. You know why you feel like you don't deserve it? Because you're too busy looking at your sin. How many of y'all got some sin somewhere in your life? Man, put your hand up. You ain't fooling nobody. I saw, I know what you did last summer. Put your hand up. Huh? How many of y'all got some sin somewhere? Come on. Like the preacher, when the preacher prayed, he said, Lord, help these thoughts up. Good Lord from heaven. Help my thoughts, Lord. Put some clothes on them. Yeah, I caught something there. I felt something there. Come on. Huh? Come on, somebody. Come on. Let me say this here. Okay, that's all right. Listen to what I'm going to tell you here. Hebrews 9, verse number 11. But Christ came as a high priest. High priest, a priest represents somebody before God. Jesus came to be our representation before God. He came as high priest of the good things to come. See, Jesus came to establish a better covenant relationship between God and man. Amen. See, you really don't want to live in the Old Testament. Somebody, why well, sure wish you could go back to the old days? You don't want to go back there. Because first of all, all you ladies, we're going to put a veil on y'all face. You're going to take that makeup off. You're going to take them high heel shoes off. The brothers, we're going to put knit pants on you. Come on. You don't, want to go back. you don't want to go back to the old days. The good part is, ladies, y'all ain't got to work no more. We're going to do all the work. Say hallelujah, women. I know. Y'all going to stay at home and take care of the house. I feel sorry for the brothers fighting at the fair. They're going to cut your arm off, cut your leg off. You ain't going to fight. No, you fight. You steal. We, no, we ain't building nobody a penitentiary. We just going to stone you and put you in the grave. I don't want to go back to the old days. No, you don't. So Jesus came as a high priest of the good things to come, watch this, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is, not of this creation. So he's talking about the tabernacle or the dwelling place of God. In the Old Testament, listen, God dwelt in a man-made tabernacle with the children of Israel. And if you wanted to connect with God, you had to go to the temple because that's where God lived. You know, he was shut up in the Holy of Holies. And so the, the high priest would go in once a year and, and make an offering for the sins of all the people. You know, everybody doing everything. But the high priest would go in behind that, that final veil every year and offer a, a sacrifice on the mercy seat of God, the Ark of the Covenant. And it would cover, cover, somebody say cover. It would cover the sins of the people for one year. Amen. Let's keep going. But the Bible says here in verse number 11 that Jesus... It's coming with a greater, a better, and more perfect tabernacle. Are you with me? So here we go as I, as I finish this in verse 12. Listen, listen. Because we talked to the Lord about it. What we have as human beings, what we had as human beings was an access problem. Access. What am I saying? I'm saying humans, because of Adam, had a problem getting before God. And as long as you have a problem getting before God, my subject will not apply to you because I'm talking about how have you talked to the Lord about it. But if you don't know you got access, then you can't talk to him about it. And as, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. And as long as you don't realize you have access, you will spend your life talking about the problem. What good is it to go to a cowboy game? Come on. And you got tickets, but you never used the tickets to go in. You'll spend the whole game complaining. Well, my Hulu went down. My Wi-Fi went down. My, 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 my internet went down. Come on. This chair is hurting my bottom. You know, it happens because you don't know the access you got. Somebody say access. Verse 12, watch this. So Jesus came for a better creation, verse 12, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place. Watch this. So man had an access problem. Watch this. We got problems. I said that in the beginning. We got issues that we need to talk to the Lord about. And the scripture is telling us today that Jesus went into the of God. Amen. Listen. With his own blood. Hallelujah. 
with his own blood that he shed on Calvary, presented it on the heavenly mercy seat for all of mankind. The scriptures say once for all, for everybody. That's why I tell you, if you die and go to hell, that's the dumbest thing in the world to do because you don't have to. And watch this here. And when he went in and washed your sins away forever, let me warn you. Let me warn you of something. Stop trying to pay for your sin. You can't do it. Quit trying to pay penance to God. You can't do it. Quit feeling guilty for what you've done. You can't muster enough guilt to please God. Well, I just really feel bad about it. Quit feeling bad about it. It's called false humility. It's called self-righteousness. And you put shame to the blood of your Savior. But what am I supposed to do? This is what you're supposed to do. First of all, get in your Bible. Go back and read these scriptures and realize that Jesus went in there with his own blood to pay for all that garbage. Now, now watch this here. When he went in, God moved out. Now I'm going to conclude this. When Jesus went in, God moved out. That's why the Bible says when he was crucified that the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom. Why? Because the Holy Spirit moved out. The presence of God moved out. And when the presence of God moved out, well, somebody said, well, where did he go? Where he went was he moved into the heart of those who put our faith in Jesus Christ. So he moved out when Jesus went in. God moved out when Jesus went in. So here we go. So what's the subject? Have you talked to the Lord about it? Watch this here. If you've been born again, the only thing you got to do for all this stuff you're dealing with, listen, is just talk to the Lord about it. Hmm? That's it. You thought it was going to be a big revelation. No, just talk to the Lord about it. Listen, just talk to the Lord about it. Well, I got this, this situation. Talk to the Lord about it. Well, they got me a bad report at the doctor. Talk to the Lord about it. Well, something ain't going right. Talk to the Lord about it. See, too many of us are not talking to the Lord about it. You're talking to everybody else. And they can't help you the way, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Talk to the Lord about it. I can't do it today. But here's, here's, here's the, the backup to that. You got to know how to talk to the Lord about it. You, you don't talk to God in unbelief. You talk to God in faith. You don't go talking to God. Listen, you don't, you don't go talking to God about all your problems. Go, go, go talk to God about all his solutions. The only reason you're not getting solutions in your life because you're talking to God about the problem. You don't talk to God about the problem. You talk to God about solutions. How many of y'all want to see God move in your life? I know I do. Quit talking to God about the problems. Talk to God about his solutions. Huh? Quit talking about your fear and talk about his faith. Quit talking about your haters and talk about his love. Come on. Quit talking about your lack and start talking about his wealth. Don't quit talking about your sickness. Talk about his healing power. Come on. Quit talking about how you're miserable and talk about how the joy of the Lord is my strength. Quit talking about how you're nervous and start talking about the Lord is my peace. Hallelujah. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's the Lord my peace. Come on. You're talking about the wrong stuff. Well, Lord, I can't find no job. What are you talking about? You confuse heaven. The Bible says that promotion does not come from the north, south, east, west. Promotion comes from the Lord. And you end up talking about how you can't find a job. You don't need to talk to the Lord about how you can't find a job. Talk to the Lord about how he's already blessed you with a job. I'm learning this more and more and more and more and more and more each day. I stopped talking to the Lord about cancer. I started talking to the Lord about his healing power. I don't do that no more. No, nah, you a healer. And the whole time you're doing that, the devil's going to be whispering in your ear, yeah, but they sick. You a healer. They're going to die. You a healer. It's going to be bad. You a healer. Um, you did, listen, you did it for the blind guys. You did it for the deaf and the dumb. You raised Darius, draw her up from the dead. Come on. You did it for the woman with the issue of blood. You are, you are a healer. 
I don't know where you at. I just know you sit high and you look low and you are a hill. And the whole time the devil going to be talking to you. Yeah, they going to die. It's going to be bad. You're going to need chemo. You're going to need radiation. You ain't going to make it. You might as well go and plan a funeral. You might as well go and pick out the casket. You are still a healer. So you got to talk to the Lord about it until the devil shut up. Hmm? Keep talking to God about winning, and then eventually you'll teach the devil that he's a loser. See, the devil just don't know he's a loser in your life yet because you're still listening to him. Hallelujah. But if you talk to God about winning, the devil will grow up and realize he'll lose and he'll leave you alone. Huh? Even Paul, at the end of his ministry, Paul finally got some relief from the devil. Isn't that right? He sure did. Go read, read the end of the book of Acts. Amen. So I'm leaving with this. Let's go. Have you talked to the Lord about it? Have you talked to the Lord about it? I don't care what you're facing. I don't care what obstacles are in your way. Listen, God got you. He got your back. He needs your cooperation. He needs the use of your mouth. Huh? God needs your mouth. Hmm? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The authority is in your mouth. Jesus said, I'm going away. I give unto y'all the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. See, you initiate heaven when you get busy. But when you talk lack, you don't lose heaven, you lose hell. Hmm? When you talk sickness, you don't lose heaven, you lose hell. That's why I say, have you talked to the Lord about it? You talk, you talk, quit talking to the devil. Give him a day off. Quit being negative. Huh? Quit being negative about everything in life. You got 66 books of happy. Quit being negative. Quit being critical. Quit criticizing everybody. Come on. Leave your supervisor alone. Leave your co-workers alone. Come on. Leave the church, leave people in the church alone. Start, listen, begin to be positive. Hallelujah. Begin to speak life. Begin to speak victory. Come on, I flew that airplane last week, and you know what? The whole time, I just ministered to the Lord, the Lord ministered to me. The devil come in, what you going to do if it crashed? I say, I get to see God early. I say, don't play with me. And then the Holy Spirit come back behind him and say, you know what? This plane can't crash because you on it. Tell you that's the that's the that's, I talked to the Lord about it. He said, It ain't gonna crash, you ain't gotta worry about that because you won't hear. And watch this here, you and you won't hear, and I'm not done with you yet. So I don't care if it's got a crash, you still gonna survive. And you know what else he told me, Miss Matt? You know what he told me? He said, Just like Paul when the ship wrecked, not only did he say Paul, he said everybody was on there with him. And the Lord told me, If the plane crashed, don't worry about it, I'm gonna save you, and I'm gonna save everybody on here with you. And it'll be a miracle that nobody never seen before. Huh? Have you talked to the Lord about it? Have you talked to the Lord about it? Huh? Have you talked to the Lord about what you've been struggling and straining with? Huh? Quit struggling and straining. You have the victory. Huh? You need something you're trying to get somewhere in life. You, need, you, need, you got all these kids. You need a new house. You need a new car. God, God works in those things too. He'll get you a new house. Well, I know the market. Yeah, the market is bad, but don't worry about that. God can change that. And you know, he'll change it just for you. Huh? I went look, I wanted to get me another truck. I'm, I'm just talking. I'm getting ready to go. I was, look, I was looking at them trucks, man. They talk, all of them fifty five to sixty thousand dollars. I said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. You know, when it was 40, I could deal with it. But I just ain't feeling it. Holy Spirit said, just wait. Hmm? The, wis the wisdom of God says, wait. Huh? See, see, when you talk to the Lord about it, a lot of times he's going to tell you, just wait. Don't move too fast. Just wait. I know your child running wild. Just wait. Listen, because God heard you when you prayed and talked to him about it. And you've been throwing that scripture up in his face. Train up a child in the ways you go. When he's old, he'll not depart. You've been talking to the Lord about that. And God hasn't forgot your baby. You ain't forgot your child? Come on. 
God knows exactly where he or she is at. Well, cocaine got him. Well, that's all right. A lot of folks been delivered off cocaine. Give the Lord a chance. Come on. It might be a cocaine redeemed preacher. Come on. A cocaine redeemed missionary. Come on. Have you talked to the Lord about it? Have you talked to the Lord about your death? I'm finna go. Have you talked to the Lord about the day you're gonna die? Because you're gonna die one day. We have these conversations. And the more I talk to him, Rev, the more he eases my mind about the day of my leaving here. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, I'm finna start talking to him about how I wanna leave here. See, y'all sitting back waiting on cancer. Man, I ain't waiting on no cancer. The Bible says Moses just went up on a mountain and he went gone. That was it. Enoch was, was walking, talking to the Lord, and he was not. Elijah was just walking along. He told uh, Elisha, hey, I'm going to get out of here. And he, whew. See, he should have put that stuff in the Bible because I'm going to talk to him about it. And, and I, and, and I want to go in a nice, warm bed, quiet, peaceful. I don't want to go on no train wreck. So I'm going to talk to the Lord about it, about my transition, about when it's time for me to go. If it's going to be violent, that means I was a martyr. Other than that, I'm going in peace. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to stay healthy while I'm here. Have you talked to the Lord about your health? You out there, have you talked to the Lord about your health? Have you talked to the Lord about that money you've been stressing over? Come on. The Bible says the streets of heaven are made of gold. The silver and the gold is his. The cattle on a thousand hills. Everything, everything belongs to him. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Everything belongs to the Lord. Why are you stressing over money? Everything belongs to the Lord. Your father. Have you talked to the Lord about it? Hmm? Go talk to him about it. If you don't know Christ, I'm giving you an invitation today. Come to the Lord just as you are. If you're here in this building, you want to know the Lord. We got a, I got a call this week. A little seven-year-old girl want to get baptized. She want to give her life to the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know what? Soon they, we're going to fill that pool up with water, even if it's just one person going to get in there. I think the water bill is worth a saved soul. Come on. I think it is. So, young people, if you want to come to the Lord, I invite you to come to the Lord. The preacher, preacher, pray in this house. I'd be listening when people pray, because I'm saying amen to the prayer. He says, suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. That means you got to come with a childlike faith. Just trust in God. If you're here in the building and you want to give your life to the Lord, you want to rededicate your life, maybe you just want to join this church. Whoop over here to my left. Some folks are going to talk to you and minister the life-saving power of God to you. If you're out there, send us a message on this thread, and we'll have somebody reach out to you and minister the saving power of Jesus Christ to you. Amen. Y'all ready to go? Let's do it. Listen, have a good time. Get ready. If you want to go to the fair, I might pop up out there. I'm thinking about it. Me and the Holy Ghost are going to have a conversation here in a little bit. Because I really want to go. I want some of them French fries and some of that lemonade they have out there. And my partner went out there and rolled that thing to go like this here. You know, and I'm like, I can't let him outdo me. You know? So I'm like, and he had his sister on there. I'm like, God, that woman. I, 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 can't, I can't let him outdo me. So I'm thinking about it. Anyway, enjoy yourself. Listen, we walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you this day and always.